Hey, hello there. Welcome to a and A. Today I have for you 15 of what I think are the best smelling designer fragrances in the market. Now I have to emphasize by saying that I'm not going off of popularity, sales or compliments for this list. It's just going to be focused on the smell of the fragrance. Another thing to note that I'm including only designer fragrances in this list, meaning the mainstream signature line designer fragrances. So there are no niche indie fragrances, also designer exclusives like Dior Privé, uh, Tom Ford Private Blend or the Chanel Lace exclusives are not in this list. First, what I consider is the best value for money fragrance out there today and that is going to be Jaipur Om from Boucheron created by Anik Minardo. This is a classy amber fragrance, uh, spicy because of some notes like nutmeg, cinnamon, also has some soapy fougere like qualities to it, little bit of sweetness from the vanilla and then dries down to the, uh, the classic amber musk and woody base. Uh, it is fresh but still has quite some amount of depth and it's uh, year-round versatile and very gentlemanly classy kind of a scent. This is an ode to the royalties of uh, Jaipur, that's a city in India and does smell much more expensive than what it actually uh, goes for today. You can find this around uh, 25, 30 euros uh, from discounters online and for that price you just can't get better value than this. This is Jaipur Rom. The next one is a Prada fragrance. It's called as Infusion Dome. If you're not familiar with the classic Prada DNA, their fragrances tend to be clean, soapy, classy, very wearable. And I would say this is really the pinnacle of that DNA. Um, this one has that Infusion series DNA, meaning that uh, the same notes like Neroli, uh, some citruses, and mainly the iris that this line is known for. All these notes give it that clean, soapy, classy, understated experience. Though there is freshness, almost laundered clothes kind of vibe in there. Uh, it also has some depth with some uh, benzoin, incense, patchouli and ambry touches. Unfortunately, this has been discontinued, but they still pop up online from time to time at discounters. If not, I recommend going with the original Infusion the Reese or the latest release, it's called uh, Cedar or Cedre, which gets you close to this one. This is Infusion Dome. Next, we are going to the house of Gucci who have discontinued all their best fragrances. They just come coming out with flankers of their um, uh, Gucci Bloom and Guilty lines. And this, I think, is the only one that I really like from their current lineup. It's getting difficult to get, but this is Gucci Guilty Absolute. And this is primarily a dark leather fragrance uh, with woods and aromatic touches. Has a smoky, dirty leather with a bit of a throwback vibe. A classic masculine kind of a, a smell, I would say. Uh, that prominent dry medicinal greasy leather dries down to um, a woody amber base I would say with some vetiver and patchouli has some ozonic petrochemical kind of touches almost comes across like a like a garage or a, or a mechanic shed almost if that sounds good to you this fragrance is for you um, I would say this is definitely not appropriate for the office and uh, it's only for casual night outs. One nitpick that I have with this is that it's a little bit synthetic with some uh, rugged edges. I wish it was a little bit smoother uh, but I still do really like this in fact. So that's Gucci Guilty Absolute. Next let's go to one of the underrated fragrances as well as houses I would say and this is going to be Costume National Soul, created by Dominique Opion. This has a sexy, sweet, playful vibe going on with the spices like cardamom. 
and a smooth leather note but also has a lot of heavy amber woods in the base um, also a bit of wood in there the sweetness from the vanilla and the sensuality from the from the amber and patchouli makes this one a, a perfect winter night out fragrance it is also classy mature and sophisticated it can be worn even to to work or uh, professional events i would say um, this is how to appeal to designer fragrance sensibilities and still come out with something interesting and enjoyable when we have something like this i don't know why people go and buy things like stronger with you azaro wanted and so on um, i really recommend this very underrated also i would say the strongest fragrance from the list today really nice costume national soul next let's go to the house of hermes and now the obvious one is going to be their hermes which i really like and i own but i have to say that i really overworn it at this point and kind of changed up my rotation when it comes to hermes that's how i discovered this one again a bit underrated this is called elixir des merveilles created by jean claude elena this is a flanker to the original eau des merveilles this is another borderline gourmandish oriental opens with that signature smooth effervescent elena hermes orange note and uh, this orangey quality reminds for most of the life of the fragrance as with uh, many hermes fragrances then comes the the thick resins the incense which gives it a lot of body i would say you also have quite a bit of vanilla tonka pearl balsam and caramel which obviously gives it that prominent sweet buttery caramel like quality then it dries down to a woody patchouli base classic base it reminds me of uh, an indian dessert uh, it's called gulab jamun really a departure from their uh, classic masculine offerings if you want to change it up a bit i recommend that you try this this is elixir des merveilles from hermes speaking of hermes masculine offerings this is another flanker from jean claude elena which i think is better than the original which itself happens to be a legendary fragrance it's called bellamy and this one is called Bellamy Vetiver. A flanker to the classic of course, which is a classy throwback floral leather kind of fragrance. I do like the original, I do want it. Then there is this one which takes that kind of ricey, scruffy leather, smoothens all those rough edges, changes the proportions of um, uh, the characteristics like woodiness, spiciness. aromatic touches ambery qualities and gives it that backbone of fantastic vetiver note i think it really ties everything together contrast that that floral leather and uh, to be honest a bit more appealing to my uh, contemporary tastes i feel that it is on par with the hermes house collection which is the private collection of uh, hermes when it comes to quality Uh, I think I really appreciate this better than the the original Bellamy. This is called Bellamy Vetiver. Next I have a Tom Ford, a fantastic leather fragrance. It's called as Ombre Leather created by Sonia Constant. This was in the private blend collection as Ombre Leather 16 uh, before being re-released in the signature line. and this is a smooth a bit spicy a bit thick dark warm kind of car interior uh, style leather i would say it is accented by uh, different notes like like jasmine and oak moss which are not used that much in modern men's designer re- uh, releases i would say it has some similarities to tuscan leather uh, from the private blend which is much more uh, expensive of course this is a little more playful but still classy and perfect for night out if you are talking modern fragrances with a prominent leather note in the recent years they are usually buried under the the sweetness spices or amber woods which are 
not that interesting to be honest i appreciate this one because it keeps that leather note at the center so if you're looking for a modern overtly leather fragrance you can't go wrong with this this is ombre leather next we are going to the house of chanel with chanel number 19 yes i do have some fragrances on the list which are technically marketed towards women but i do wear all this myself um, i don't buy into the entire marketing the original number 19 was created by henry robert and it's named after chanel's birth date august 19th this is a sheep type fragrance but more with a green vibrant crispy vibe has a lot of that tart galbanum note accented by the classy chanel florals uh, predominantly iris uh, rose jasmine ylang uh, it's a bit powdery waxy then dries down to a soft uh, oak moss note with uh, some woody touches extremely elegant timeless for something that came out in the 70s really complex with the transitions quality through the roof again on par with their exclusives line i would say the color here just perfectly represents everything that we need to know it's like sun shining on you standing in the middle of a huge uh, green grassland with lots of trees and plants uh, surrounding you would call this as a spring in a bottle underrated because uh, number five gets most of the attention uh, and it's getting a bit harder to find in the recent years and uh, i hope that channel keeps this around for uh, the future also if you like this one check out number 19 pud which has a boosted iris note now for another chanel with an interesting name we have egoist by jacques polge this one opens up spicy with uh, some cinnamon and coriander then comes the the dirty vanilla with a classy touch um, it has also carnation rose which gives it that unwashed skin kind of uh, sensuality then dries down to a woody base with some leather ambrette and tobacco during the dry down the predominant woody note is the sandalwood which is uh, creamy textured crunchy a bit sweet and smoky um, it was apparently a flop uh, when it released then they tried releasing other versions of it uh, different names platinum egoist etc but this has slowly gained uh, a big following and happens to be my favorite from their uh, masculine offerings yeah there is the the blue and allure lines which are uh, very popular and uh, easy to wear since but they just don't excite me anymore and uh, this one makes for a satisfying experience next going to a house which is very underrated again but makes non mainstream avant garde uh, kind of fragrances and that's come the garçon and the first fragrance that we have is called Come the Garçon 2. This bottle is obviously a, a fingerprint magnet, so bear with me. This was created by Mark Buxton, and this one is classified as a sheep, but does not smell like a, a typical one. Has a lot of spicy notes uh, tea, nutmeg, angelica note, and it's uh, done very smoothly. It also has a floral heart with uh, magnolia and the woody dry down. What makes this one unique is the prominent ink note that's been inspired by Japanese calligraphy. These notes have a lot of contrasting facets, dark, fresh, cool, warm, also has a boost of aldehydes, almost like a fresh printed paper bundle in an air conditioned room and someone is ironing clothes nearby that's the kind of vibe this one gives though it is unusual i would say it's very wearable almost in a blue fragrance kind of way except this one came in 1999 way before all those came out 
and still manages to smell very interesting and futuristic. Definitely an odd one, but a fantastic fragrance. Comme des garçons, too. Next, another Comme des garçons. This is called as Black. This opens quite dark with a kick of incense and black pepper. Almost like putting your nose inside a, a, a box containing a whole black peppers. Then the birch and the inky licorice takes over, which are the dominant notes here. Then rise down to wood shaving like cedar and vetiver notes. It's overall a really dry fragrance, almost a rot tar like smoky resinous, even a bit ashy, barbecuey also churchy with those uh, resinous incense -y touches. I would say the name fits it perfectly. That's black from Comme des Garçons. Next going to the most respected and acclaimed French fragrance house and that is going to be Guerlain and the first one I have here is Samsara. So this is the Eau de Parfum uh, created by uh, Jean-Paul Guerlain. This is an oriental again with the central note here being the sandalwood which I love. It's one of my favorite notes ever. Um, opens with some citrus, dries down to a woody scent accented by the, the Guerlainard uh, florals I would say. Just the iris, rose, jasmine, yelang as usual. It really does justice to the characteristics of uh, sandalwood. Here it's creamy, a bit lactonic, uh, coconutty, touch of powder in there and supported by vanilla, tonka, amber and musk in the base. Now the current version is good but if you get a chance I suggest you try the vintage version which looks like this. It uses copious amounts of uh, real Mysore sandalwood oil which is highly restricted now. It's not being used in any uh, Western fragrances anymore. Uh, maybe a couple of exceptions, but they are just too expensive. The name Samsara means circle of life. This one is absolutely divine, calming and meditative almost. One of the best, if not the best Western sandalwood fragrance ever. Samsara from Guerlain. Next, we are going for another Guerlain, and this time we have Leur Bleu Eau de Parfum by Jacques Guerlain. This is a legendary floral fragrance, opens with uh, a kick of some lemon, peach and spices like coriander. Um, also has a prominent anise note in there. Then comes the Guerlainard florals, in tons and tons which are done in a very powdery fashion. It's almost like you uh, crushed some dried flowers and took a whiff of it. That's how this com comes across to me. This then dries down to a resinous woody base, um, as usual, with uh, the older guirlands. Reminds me of going to very old uh, temples. This one is almost 110 years old as of today. Uh, it's almost like you are being thrown into the 1920s and experiencing those innocent, naive, uncertain times. Inspired by the blue hour, just before the, the sunset, where you are trying to grasp a passing moment. Lots of contrasting shades in there, very emotionally created fragrance, masterfully blended. And uh, this is an absolutely classic uh, Guerlain. Some people obviously are going to think that it does not belong to this time, it smells dated and so on, but I don't care. I absolutely love this one. That is Leur Bleu Eau de Parfum from Guerlain. Next, coming to the house of Dior, I have Fahrenheit Le Parfum. Created by François de Machy, this one takes the rugged, leathery, spicy, ozonic, floral DNA, the leathery DNA of the original, and adds a bit more spiciness with some coriander, cumin, licorice, suede leather, 
and also a boozy rum note plus copious amounts of uh, bourbon vanilla so this is going to be a more smoother sweeter modernized amber woody version of the original fahrenheit while still having that violety gasoline kind of uh, vibe with just some hints of rum fantastic for the winter uh, now purists are going to claim that the original is the best and, and i wouldn't argue with that i like it too but the one that i gravitate toward most uh, in the current days is this one now the last but one of the best we have another dior this is dior homme which in some ways is a stark opposite to the previous one uh, this is a more urban type of a scent and the original dior homme was created by olivier polch who is now the master perfumer at um, in house perfumer at chanel this one has that poached fruit Uh, kind of vibe followed by the cacao the lavender giving it that bitterness a bit of soapy quality then there is also the signature iris which was really innovative at the time in men's fragrances it has that waxy powdery makeupy kind of a uh, vibe in there which gives it that classic quality then dries down to some leather cedar and vetiver The Diorum Intense and Diorum Parfum get more hype. I myself uh, like those at first and kind of dismissed this one. But then I started wearing this more and more in the last few years and now I just love all three of them. I recommend those two as well. But this did come out first in 2005 and I would say it's uh, a modern classic, one of the best fragrances in the last 20 years. absolutely fantastic fragrance that is diorum original not 2020 now you might have noticed that i just completely ignored uh, some houses like yves saint laurent azzaro uh, armani and so on not that they are all bad but uh, i do have some fragrances from them and i do like them but i don't think they live up to the uh, other houses that i featured here uh, i like to call them the big 4 those are dior chanel guerlain and hermes i don't think any other brand that's the big brands live up to them in any way in terms of quality and the overall wearing experience that's why i limited my list to those fragrances so there you go what i think are some of the best smelling designer fragrances that you can get hope you enjoyed it have a good day i will see you with another video take care ciao